Hi everyone, this is Martin from How To Make Mobile Games. This is part 8 of the 2D Platformer Developer Diary video series. And big milestone, the game is now live on the Google Play Market as version 1.0. And so uh, this is sort of a big milestone in the development process of course. And uh, it is a very, very early version which, uh, which I've uploaded. And I've, I've uploaded it to Google Play just because it's a lot faster to get into the market and it's a lot easier for people to download through Google Play um, rather than going through the update process on, on iTunes. So, so it is sort of a, a beta version, I suppose you could call it, whilst uh, well, this initial version on Google Play. So I'll just go down my points here and uh, I also have to answer a couple of questions. So thanks for the recent comments, everybody, as well. Uh, as always, my apologies for taking a week to do another video. Um, and as always, I'm <laughs> pretty busy. So. Anyway, so yeah, the first version is now live. Uh, you can do a search for 2D Platformer X. That's the, uh, the initial name I've given the game. That might change later, and it probably will change later. So, um, you know, uh, I think if the link will always stay the same, but the name may change a little bit. But if you download the first version, then just keep on automatic updates, then it will just automatically update. So uh, that's a good way. But if you do lose the name of the game, or if, if you can't find it, then please drop me a comment, and then I can point you to it. Uh, but we'll see what the name will change to. So uh, I'll also put the link in the description down below, as, as I've mentioned here, so you can go directly to Google Play. And um, yeah, so a very, it's a really early version at the moment. And this is the Google Play page right now. And I've, I've put a placeholder icon in there and some just two screenshots and you know almost zero description, really. Uh, and the reason I wanted to do that is that it allows me to get some feedback from from the players and, and check the statistics and which le levels players like and which ones they don't like or when do people stop playing the game like they get to level three and then they they let it go um, so I've not put a lot of description here and I've, and I've not done any marketing at all apart from on the video channel here so if you're thinking about doing testing this way as well it might be a good idea if you're an independent developer to do the same kind of thing so you, you want to get a very early version released and then beta tested. And, and this happens very often with, uh, say, PC games. They do release beta versions first into the public to see how they, they respond and what players think of things. So this is sort of my approach to it. And so, of course, it's, you know, uh, it, it's very unpolished at the moment. There's, there's, very, um, there's a lot more features that need to be added. So please let me know what you think anyway. But you can check it out now and download it from the Google Play Market. So, all right. Okay, so let me just delve into Unity here. Um, I think the big one is, and I might have already mentioned this uh, uh, maybe in my last video, but I think I'd shown you all of the the levels that I'd already done, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is the level select screen, and I've just done a little update here and added these planes uh, behind each of the each of the level uh, six levels. This will change. Uh, what I've found is there's a problem between I like this level geometry and I can remember what it looks like, but I don't know the level number. So I have to go clicking through number, oh, was it number 13? Was it number 14 that I like? And I can't remember which one. So this will change later. I'll be adding images to this level select screen uh, so that people can see very easily like, oh, this is level one, this is level two, and this is the level I like, this is the level I don't like, and, and so on. And I've also put in the end here, um, to those of you who, uh, to the players out there who, who don't know about this channel or anything, I'm just doing a message saying, hey, everybody, this is a very early version, and then some Facebook and email links here. Um, definitely in all your games, it's also a marketing thing as well, is include a Facebook link in there so people can add you or like a Facebook page or something like that. And then in the future, when you update your Facebook page, they will get a notification on their wall. And so it's good future marketing. And then also email me as well is a great way to... Um, get players emails and obviously not to spam them we, we don't want to do that but give them some uh, information about updates or maybe some other games that you have every now and then and and obviously they can opt out of emails as well so that's that's a good way to to sort of uh, say harvest users in a way because once the user uninstalls your application if you haven't connected with them on Facebook or email that user may be gone forever so uh, definitely do that in all of your games I totally recommend it uh, especially the email part. We've, we've got like 40 or 50,000 email addresses now uh, through our iPhone and Android games. Uh, we've not done any kind of email marketing apart from an automatic email reply, 
when people send us an email, but we've not actually used those, that email list yet. But it's it's building, and once uh, once we sort of have our marketing a little bit more straightened out, then then we'll start to utilize that list. So, all right. Anyway, back on to the subject. Uh, uh, rearrange levels so it's easier first. Yeah. So one of the one of the things that I did uh, recently in, in one of the most recent changes was I've tried to do level one, two, three, four, five, and so on as as the easy levels. And um, and then the later ones get a lot harder. And then level 18 is, is the hardest level that's been created yet. Yeah, it's very, very difficult, and I've only completed it once or twice. The good thing is is that you can uh, get through the level by using coins. Um, so you can click on this complete level button, and I think I've shown you this before. And you can automatic, automatically complete the level for coins. Uh, coins... Players can purchase the coins, or they can just use TapJoy, which they, where they can get free coins, or they can just collect the coins through the levels and then build up enough coins to, to complete the level. So um, I also changed a little bit, just to show you here on the character. I had updated the the, uh, the collision mesh a little bit, and this is more of a technical uh, uh, game designer point, I guess. But the character now has a, uh, a capsule collider on him as opposed to a, a square collider. So I hope that you can see this in the view screen here. But if you can see the... I'm going to move him into position. There we go. So the character now has this um, uh, capsule collider. It's a little bit out, off, offline. I'll, I'll need to change that. Uh, what it's causing is it's causing him to like slide a little bit more uh, when he stops walking. So I'm just tapping it here. I'm just tapping my move button here a little bit, and and it's not the, it kind of moves a little bit more than previously, and that's because there's less friction. Before, when it was a square down here, there's more friction on the floor, so he would stop faster. So I, I need to tweak the controls a little bit. So one of the things I'd like to know is, do you guys think it, it's it feels like he's on ice, or do you feel like the character is a little bit too floaty, or something like this, or, or too fast, maybe? Because uh, I think control is really a, a key key, it is the key to to sort of good gameplay, um, especially for a 2D platformer game. Is, is Does it feel like you have real control over this character? Does it feel right? The speed, the height of the jump, the difficulty, and so on. Um, all right, so uh, added more artwork around the clock. Yeah, so the other thing was, as you can probably see here, this time, uh, this time button up here. Or time, sorry, this time clock up here that's sort of like swinging back and forth. I wanted to bring more attention to the time, so I updated some artwork up here. Uh, and I think the inspiration might have come from an old Sega racing game. Uh, I think it might have been Daytona, maybe, but there's a swinging Sonic thing on the mirror um, as you're racing around. And I might have got subconsciously got inspiration from that. Uh, but the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to put more focus on the time. Um, because there's two things that a player can do in this game. One is they can play through the levels and have it like an adventure. The um, uh, the second target that players or things that players might enjoy is to get a higher time, a best time in the level. Um, and I'll be adding like the best time feature uh, more in depth soon as well. But I think beating the time of, of, of other players and, and reaching the top ten world rank is going to be a real focus for this game as well. Uh, as it is, as it is sort of focus that is a niche market on more hardcore 2D platform players who might enjoy a really good challenge. So that's what I've done there. And so the next point is, yeah, lots of levels and functionality coming soon. And I'm wondering what the next best thing to do is, uh, probably levels. So yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of quick updates with this, um, with this game. It is, at the moment, the largest game that I've ever developed for Cobble Play. Uh, for those of you who have played some of my previous games, you'll notice that they are all very single level quick games with a single mechanic, which which is the same for this. It's a single mechanic, but there's only one level throughout. So this is really the biggest development I've ever done. And one of the things that I'm interested to find out is, or, or see if I can do, is basically do games with levels, larger games make more money. And I think that they will because we have some experience with the publishing business that we do. And we have games with levels uh, that do a lot more revenue than uh, the Cobble Play individual level games. And, and I think partly it's because what happens is when a player stays in the game and plays the game for longer, 
the uninstall rate is less, usage is higher, and therefore the ranking algorithm uh, allows it to be ranked higher in the app stores as well. Plus the other thing is that the player, obviously, if they're staying in the game longer, then they become more attached to that game, uh, more emotionally invested in the game, and therefore more interested to unlock the next levels by, you know, getting free coins or paying for a coin pack. So I've definitely seen levels have a, have a, uh, a lot larger impact on, on revenue. And so this is the biggest one. And, and I'm going to be focusing a little bit more on the business side of things as well. If I do find out that this works well, uh, obviously after, after I've done a more polished version and, and had more updates, then that might be just the business model going forward is, is to stop doing these small single level games because uh, I, I now generate enough revenue with Cobble Play to, to take care of you know uh, living costs and so on. Um, and now it's time to focus more on larger games that really keep the player and, and give them a lot of entertainment and a lot of value for their time and money. So uh, I'll let you know how that goes anyway, but definitely uh, uh, stick around because I'm going to be doing more, uh, in these videos I'm going to be doing more of the uh, how the downloads were, how the revenue was, uh, how did Chartboost revenue do? How did the in-app purchase revenue do on, on Amazon or Google Play or iTunes? So um, on the iOS point as well here is, uh, is uh, that's going to be coming soon in the next couple of weeks. I want to get a polished version done uh, or a better version done first before I do an iOS version. And that's why I'm doing Google Play because it's very easy and to update and it's very quick to get it into the market. And then once I have, say, a... Um, uh, a little more polished version, then then that'll be coming on iOS. So, uh, and I skipped over a point here. Sorry, I, I need to get Flurry added in as well. If you don't know about it, go to Flurry.com, um, and this is a tracking uh, uh, website that allows you to track user data and see how many times it gets downloaded and and what's the retention rate and how many minutes are spent in the game. Um, it's a really good way to track it and to track the user data. Uh, at the moment, it's not working for some reason. I need, I need to figure this out, so I'm going to come back to this soon. So, all right, next point. So, answers to some questions. Let me open up my other browser here. And I think there's a couple of comments on here. So, uh, sorry again, guys, if, if I've not answered any questions from before, please drop another comment because um, I think I missed a couple before. I think, Geeky, you may, maybe you mentioned this and... and um, so if I do miss any any of the quest, any of the uh, questions, then just drop me another one, and I'll, I'll get back to you for sure. So uh, Pedro said, in my opinion, uh, if this is a side project, you might consider add a little more work on the artwork, but keeping that retro feeling. Uh, yeah, Pedro, I totally agree. Uh, the the art style at the moment is is something that is still um, obviously in development from from uh, the look of the game, obviously. Uh, I've been trying to get some inspiration from looking at Commodore 64 games and early NES games, uh, and also some of the games on the Google Play Market, like um, uh, there's a new one called Crazy Jump, and it is super retro looking. I mean, it's even um, uh, Atari 5200 level of graphics. Uh, there's also another game called Bit Trip uh, Beat, I think it's called, which is a sort of neo retro, uh, new retro game, and and that's very very cool looking so I might focus on that area uh, the other thing I need to get in the game is music as well uh, there's no music in the game right now so uh, it is a very very early version and the art style I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it it's probably my weakest point to be honest uh, is is artwork and uh, retro allows me to build artwork myself but it's something that's still very time consuming for me but uh, you know thanks for the feedback anyway definitely I, I do agree with you so it's gonna uh, I might do, say, uh, uh, 50 levels and then create single art assets that can be then dragged into each individual level. Uh, you know, like, um, for example, in Mario, you've got the, the, the green pipe. Uh, I'd have a green pipe art asset, just a single piece of uh, uh, geometry, uh, an image, and then just be able to pull that into the level in different places so it looks like there's more variety. And then obviously add things into the background as well and, and the menus and so on. So uh, I think that was the end of the comments on that one. So all right. So five days ago, uh, so uh, I am greater said, name it Super Platformer. Might get some attention since people will search for Super Mario. Uh, yeah, that's something I considered as well. I uh, I think I did a search on Google Play recently for Super Mario, and um, uh, this was probably a, actually a couple of months ago now. Uh, what the consideration is when I do uh, naming a game and, and search engine optimization is, and it's, it's an ongoing thing, um, 
uh, it's almost like an art in itself. It's trying to find the best name that's not too competitive but not too uh, obscure. So I've just typed in Super Mario here and we've got at least a thousand results. So the problem is if someone types in Super Mario, would our game ever get found? Um, probably because there's, yeah, Super Mario is in the title here. Super Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario. So yeah, it, it's a good idea. Definitely putting it in the description. I don't know about the, maybe using Super in the title as well would be good. Uh, and hopefully if it does climb the ranks, I will get found if it, if it, people do type in Super Mario. Uh, but SEO is definitely something that I always consider quite heavily when I'm first designing a game. And that's why in this game, in 2D platformer, I've left the title kind of open and I've kind of sort of mentioned to people that the, the name of the game may change. And that's really an SEO thing, especially for an independent developer, because uh, when I say SEO, for, sorry, for those of you who don't know, it's search engine optimization, or uh, a new term is ASO, which is App Store Optimization, uh, or App Store Search Optimization. Uh, and that's to do with keywords and being able to find the game. Uh, it plays a, a huge role in, in um, independent developer games when we're talking about small teams or, or a team that doesn't have any kind of marketing budget. And so it, it's something that I need to consider very, very carefully. Uh, but who knows? I mean, I just typed in 2D platform before, and um, I'm actually in the first page if I double check this now. Uh, and this is just for uh, Google Play. Uh, each app store has its own sort of SEO uh, approaches. Uh, but 2D platformer, I'm actually three, and I've not done any marketing or any nothing at all. So um, maybe 2D platformer is a good name. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, you know, I think I think within the niche that I'm looking at, within the the, the circle of uh, hardcore retro 2D platformer players, they know what 2D platformer is. But to a, a wide audience out there, 2D platformer maybe they really don't know what this what this type of game is. So. Um, but definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that one out for sure, and I'll, I'll let you guys know. Uh, Manuel said, the new level I saw in this video are very creative. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, and if possible, I would like a brief explanation on how the laser physics works. Uh, no problem. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to pause this video, Manuel. I'll be back in one second, and I'll show you that.